Why did Dash's latest governance proposal turn out the way it did? And more importantly, how do Dash's governance proposals tend to turn out in general? So as I covered before relatively recently, Dash just had a governance vote to decide basically how to revamp its treasury system. Basically, the way things were before, 10% of Dash's total created coin supply every month was up to be allocated towards development funding or marketing or whatever else stakeholders decided to vote on. Now, there were a couple of competing proposals that did essentially the same thing in this regard, where they both made it so that unspent coins, rather than not being created, would be created and would be distributed to the network anyway. So therefore, stakeholders voting on proposals would actually see the money that they save by not spending it, rather than only seeing what they could spend on. And this is supposed to be a great realignment of economic incentives, where before people saw this as free money they were spending, and just might as well spend whatever's out there. And now, even though nothing really concretely has changed that much, uh, the actual incentives might change because people will actually get to see what they were spending before, and hopefully make better decisions as a result. The second aspect was to increase the upper limit of a possible treasury to a 20% rather than a 10% with the idea that this 20% would not be reached regularly at all. In fact, that even below 20% maybe would be a common spending. So just to have an upper limit in case of emergencies. The difference between these two plans, as I covered before, was that the community floated plan left all the responsibility and all the potential rewards and costs on the masternodes who make the actual voting decision, and miners would have a fixed rate regardless of what spending decisions the masternodes made, while the Dash Core Group plan, which ultimately won out, had the cost of the treasury distributed amongst masternodes and miners, so basically the whole network. Now it was a fairly competitive vote, with hundreds of masternodes voting for each and against each, but ultimately the Dash Core Group plan won by a relatively decent margin. Now I've done videos before where I discussed how people's decision making in crypto tends to go around um, a few key factors, most notably stability and profit. That the number two is people won't usually act against their own economic self-interest, especially in the short term, though the long term is a little bit harder to figure out. But the first one, of course, is stability. People tend to be risk averse. They don't want to vote for the riskier proposition, especially in these crazy crypto markets, which are full of risk enough as it is. Now, the profit factor between these two proposals wasn't necessarily as clear. Assuming a 10% treasury spending, which is relatively consistent with what we've seen over the years, without these new incentives, of course, um, both plans kind of even out. Now, it's when it goes over 10% that masternodes start to lose out under the community plan, and they start to win out when it goes under 10% and obviously vice versa for the Dash Core Group floated plan. So it's really hard to tell if this profit mode have made any kind of an impact on voting decisions. If so, it would be assuming that over 10% would be spent every month and therefore the Dash Core Group plan would be more profitable to the people voting ultimately for these two different proposals. But from what I've seen, I would probably attribute the end result to stability. People went for the more stable plan. Now the Dash Core Group plan was more stable for a couple of reasons. First of all, it didn't change the inherent sharing of the burden of the treasury between miners and masternodes, whereas the community plan, the MNO plan as it was called, did actually expressly shift this to all financial responsibility being all on the people who actually make this decision. And so that was a little bit of a departure from the way things have operated in the past. And of course, Dash Core Group, the main development group behind Dash, which has a track record of producing a whole lot of good stuff in the code base, right? Um, they're viewed as, I guess, the more stable, trustworthy option that tends to be involved in these kinds of decisions in the past, of course, subject to network approval, but rather than a group of people that don't have that same track record to the network. And so it's just the default option is the safest option. And that's kind of the reason I think things shook out the way they did. I recently did a video examining the most recent Bitcoin cash split which broke with the tradition of favoring the incumbent development team. I surmise that this was because the Bitcoin ABC plan included an actual cost, cutting into minor profit, 
which outweighed the stability promised by keeping with the incumbent team. A good chunk of infrastructure and business represented by key actors, including Bitcoin.com, splitting with ABC also served to even out stability considerations. Now, is there a simpler way to explain all this than just economic incentives and risk aversion? Like, doesn't Dash Core Group just get what they want? They are kind of the founding team behind the coin. They kind of make everything that everyone runs on. They kind of should enjoy a whole lot of support and maybe they actually control the entire project in a centralized kind of a nefarious way. Well, no, I don't think so. While Dash Core Group does enjoy quite a bit of trust from the network for basically getting Dash to where it is today, there are quite a few historical examples of the network not really just going with what the main development team wants to do. If this was just a situation where the main development team just had a blank check to do basically whatever they wanted, I think a lot of things would have turned out quite differently in the past. So let's examine a few past proposals on this. So let's take a little trip down memory lane and look at a few of the past governance proposals. In early 2016, just as the Bitcoin block size debate was starting to heat up, Dash's founder Evan Duffield submitted a governance proposal simply asking whether Dash should increase its 1 megabyte block size to 2 megabytes. This also broadly constituted a solidifying of Dash's direction to approach on-chain rather than off-chain scaling. The proposal by the Dash core team passed overwhelmingly in this case. In early 2018, two options were presented to modernize Dash's branding and logo. One was developed by marketing firm Ogilvy & Mather, which was hired by Dash Core Group, which was originally expected to be the only option. However, community members engaged with branding firm Tharp & Clark to develop an alternative logo and branding scheme. Both were put to a vote, and the community proposed option one by a healthy margin. As mentioned earlier, two variants of an overhaul to Dash's treasury system were proposed recently one proposed by Dash Core Group, and the other by a group of masternode operators. The vote was competitive, but Dash Core Group's option won by a clear-cut margin. Now, before you crucify me saying there's a ton of other governance proposals out there, I know there were some. I picked the best examples of the governance process, the more important governance questions that were asked. There were a bunch of other random ones, but I excluded them for various reasons. Plenty of other governance proposals have been attempted in the past, but most of these were either about specific other proposals, launched by trolls seeking to sow chaos, or proposed without clear messaging or wide community backing. Now, when I mentioned earlier that Dash Core Group was a safer option due to a good track record and a whole lot of trust from the network, I should point out one interesting area where there hasn't been nearly as much goodwill from the network, uh, public relations. In this area, there have been quite a few proposals that have been shot down by the network that Dash Core Group has floated or been behind or whatever. This could be due to the complicated nature of PR and how it works, or it could also be because people just did not trust that Dash Core Group was doing a good job at all in this domain. Some early proposals, including Dash Public Awareness and Transform PR, were proposed by Dash founder Evan Duffield in late 2015 and early 2016, respectively. Both lost by significant margin. Later, Dash Core Group settled on using Waxman PR in late 2016, which was passed by a comfortable margin. Persistent questions and criticism regarding the firm's performance eventually led to a network decision between two PR firms, Waxman and Shift, with the latter resoundingly winning, soundly rejecting Dash Core Group's preference in the domain of public relations. So circling back to what really determines governance votes in this kind of thing, risk and money. In this case, in the case of these two governance proposals, there wasn't really a clear money element either way. What we did have here, however, was a clear risk component where you had a group of people that the network largely did not really trust to make these kinds of developmental decisions, or as much as Dash Core Group, versus the most trusted institution in the entire network. And so even though both plans had clearly their merits and their supporters on each side, ultimately what won out was the safer, more stable option. We owe a lot of this result to Dash Core Group's great track record of developing quality stuff and pretty well balancing the incentives of the network up to this point and all the hard work and research and other things like that that went into this. Now clearly where the network does not trust them nearly as much is in making PR decisions, in getting the word out there, in getting Dash actually noticed for its many innovations and other things like that. That doesn't seem to be something that the network tends to trust Dash Core Group with. Also it's easier to take a chance on this kind of a thing because missing out on a little publicity here or there 
is not necessarily as fatal as developing something that really doesn't work and breaks the whole network or sends the whole network down a bad path that it can't recover from. So I think that the network's much more willing to take risks when it comes to something like public relations to try to find a better way and they don't seem to trust the core team nearly as much on that one issue. So I'd like to say once again that this is just my opinion based on a bunch of observations and if you have a different perspective I'd really want to know it. This is something that is a critical issue to cryptocurrencies, how they move forward, how they make decisions in harmony, how everything gets decided on and the reasons why people vote for what they do whether it be explicit voting in a decentralized autonomous organization like Dash, or whether it's hash rate voting in terms of purely mining based cryptocurrencies, or whether it's something else entirely based on, you know, people taking their money elsewhere and deciding to sell on one project or business decisions or things like that. So if you have any additional insights, I'd love to know them. Drop them in the comments below. Send me an email, send me a Twitter or something. Nah, whatever you want to do, do it. I'll see you guys next time.